Is that all right? Uh, well, with well, that, well, welcome. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah. This meeting is being recorded uh, for Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B. You may call the meeting to order now, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you, sir. Um, welcome to the April 2020 meeting of the Weathersfield Zoning Board of Appeals. We have tonight one application as part of, part of our public hearing, and then we will move into the public meeting, which will uh, consist of our discussion and vote on the application, as well as approval of April minutes. Um, an opportunity for other comments on business not on tonight's agenda, and also we are looking to formalize our officers for uh, the, I guess, the, the re remainder of the year ahead of us. So that is the agenda for tonight. Uh, with that, we'll move into our public hearing. Do we have a uh, volunteer from among the commissioners who wants to read the application? happy to do it again. Great, thank you. Yep. Application number 6230-20, variance from section 3.7 to allow aggregate side yard setback of 10 feet against the 15 feet required to facilitate the installation of an AC compressor at the southern side of the dwelling as shown on the plot plan. Residential Zone B, location 68 Goodwin Ave, applicant Nicole St. Pierre. All right, thank you. And uh, so Ms. St. Pierre, this is the point, if we were in the normal meeting setting, we would have you come up to the microphone and uh, tell us about the application. So we'll just um, have you start with that. Uh, if you wanna give us some background and an overview of the application and then the commissioners will have a chance to ask questions uh, as we go. Okay, so it's for an AC unit. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I missed one thing. Would you just, for the record, please just state your name and address? Oh, Nicole St. Pierre, 68 Goodwin Ave. Thank you. Yep. So I have my dad here because I'm not 100% sure on everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. uh, you want me to talk? Yeah, this is my father. Hi, Rick Sam here. Right. I'm representing Nicole. Uh, she wants to put could in, you uh, just give, sir? I'm sorry. Could you just give your address, please, for the record? I live on 46 Bristol Street in Hartford. Great, thank you. Okay. Well, she wants to put in central air in the house because it's uh, gets quite warm in here in the summertime, and fortunately, the house has it's all uh, casement windows, so there really isn't any. Uh, potential to put air conditioning units in the windows. Uh, so the, the best option is to put a, a little a, uh, central air unit on and the really the optimum place to put it is right below the um, ridge on the south side of the building. The north side has a uh, garage attachment and um, the air conditioning people say, you know, they can't really run it through the garage to get into the the ceiling. So the south side is the optimum place for it. Any other questions? Okay. Um, and this may be a question for Charles just to frame up the overall um, <clears throat> okay. variance well, being requested uh, here. So there's an existing variance on the opposite side of the house, yes. right? I'm, I'm coming to you, Mr. Chairman. So, okay. I am trying to pull up the uh, plot plan. Um, I uh, you're looking to share it on screen. Okay. I don't see the. Well, while you're doing that, if I can ask a question um, of the applicant, have you had any contact with your neighbor on that side of the house where you want to put the condenser? Yes, yes. they said it was fine. 
Yes, it said it was fine. Okay. Is there any um, other kind of barrier between that side of your property and their property? Is there a fence or yeah. shrubbery or anything? Yeah. There's a fence. Okay. There's a fence, yes. There's a fence. But it's kind of, it's okay. They're not going to see it from their window. It's on the corner. I mean, the fence is right there. And then, I mean, it's way far in the back, so. Okay. Okay, yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, there is the required uh, setbacks for this zone. Uh, this property is located in the zone B, and the required setbacks are for one side yard, five feet, and for aggregate, it's 15 feet. So in uh, <clears throat> September, on September 27, 1965, a variance was granted for the garage on the northern side to be built, allowing a single side yard of four feet as against five feet required. Today, the applicants are seeking to install this AC unit, which will uh, encroach in that remaining 10 feet side yard. So now uh, we will be left with a six feet side yard on the southern side and that's where the aggregate comes in with six plus four making it ten okay. feet aggregate as against 15 feet required okay do we have any uh, questions from any of the other commissioners for the applicant i have a question go ahead okay um i think did you say that your neighbor on the south side, you did ask them and they did not have any objections? No. I, That's correct. Okay. It, it seems when I drove by that, that your condenser unit would be pretty close to the windows on their side of the house. Is there any chance that the condenser could go behind the little gate you have? No. No. It's, it's, there's eight feet there anyways from the, fe the gate is eight feet wide and it's going to go right by the, right against the house by the, the chimney. So they, they, that's at least eight feet to the end of the fence and then they got another three feet to their house. Now, don't you have a, a gate? Yes, yeah, so we have a gate right there. It's an eight foot wide gate. Okay, my there's question was, gate. could the condenser go behind your gate no. so it is more protected from your neighbors? No, no, there's a, there's a patio on there's the back of the yeah, house three, that uh, extends out about 10 feet. So that yeah. would mean the compressor would have to go inside 10, there, 10 feet yeah. away from the house. And the air conditioning people say that's too far to run the, run from the compressor to the unit of the attic. Okay. And, and I'm sorry, can we just clarify the, um, and I, it made us not be clear on my screen, the, um, the other comments are coming from, because I know we had Ms. St. Pierre and her father. Who's the other person who's speaking? Uh, Rita Justin, was asking the question yeah. in her hut. That's, that's Justin Marquis. He lives here with Nicole. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, what was the name? Justin Marquis. Okay, thank you. All right, any other commissioners have any questions? All right. Um, applicants, anything else you'd like to add? Um, and another reason why I can't go in the back is because our back floods. Our backyard's a mud pit when it rains. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something else we have to address too. <clears throat> okay. But yeah, I All already right, talked about they're fine with it. Um, it's only going to be a little one and a half ton units. I can hear it from standing three feet away from it. So, okay. Yeah, it's. <clears throat> okay. Um, and Julie, just uh, to confirm, did you got all the names and addresses you needed? Yes, I have Nicole and Rick St. Pierre and Justin Marquis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. And uh, just one last call for any questions from commissioners. Looks like we're good. All right. May we have a motion then to, and thank you, uh, 
to all of you on the uh, applicant side. We are going to uh, ask for a motion now to move into our public meeting, which is where we will discuss and, and take vote. Uh, can we get a motion to close the public hearing? I'll move to uh, close the public hearing. Move on. Second. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. So we have closed the public hearing. We'll move now into the public meeting. Michael, would you mind reading the application in again? Oh. Application number 6230-20, variance from section 3.7. Conventional requirements to allow aggregate side yard of 10 feet against 10 feet as against um, 15 feet required. 15 feet required. Yes, sir. It's more than Facilitate the installation of the AC condenser unit at the southern side of the dwelling as shown on the plot plan, residential zone B, location 68 Goodwin Avenue, applicant Nicole St. Pierre. All right. So, commissioners, with that, uh, do we have any opening comment or discussion? I'll make a motion to accept as approved or as submitted. Okay. All right. So, we have a motion to approve as submitted. And um, again, the, the overall impact here is essentially um, really four feet if we go against the existing variance that, that is there for the, the opposite side of the house. And um, yeah, there's, seems like pretty uh, straightforward as far as location and necessity for placement there. So um, yeah, I, I think this is pretty straightforward. Is there any other comment or question, commissioners? No. All right, so we have a motion and a second to, uh, Approve as submitted. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? <clears throat> All right. The application is approved. Um, and we thank you very much. We're going to move into the rest of our meeting. You're welcome to uh, continue to join us or... Um, can, I, can I ask a question as regards that? Now, when the installer goes to get the permit, do we have to wait for... Uh, any kind of documentation from your committee to give the installer before he goes for this per for the permit for this? Yes. Um, in answer to your question, um, the variance the variance won't be effective until it's filed under land records. So uh, the variance will be published in the newspaper this coming Thursday, and we must allow five days. I'm sorry, we must allow 15 days. So after 15 days from Thursday, you, you will be able to come into our office and get uh, the town clerk's regis reg registration form so that you could take to the town clerk and, and register the variance on the land record. But we can talk about that further tomorrow. I, you can call me tomorrow, I call, call you and we can go over that some more. Okay. Yeah. All right, we'll call you tomorrow, Charles. Thank you for approving. All right, thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for doing it virtually. We appreciate that. Right. No Thank problem. You. Um, Thank you. Okay. All right, so continuing on with the other items on the agenda, we have up next approval of minutes from the, uh, actually from the March 30th meeting. Can we have a motion on the minutes? I move to uh, approve the minutes. All right, thanks, Michael. We have a, oh. Uh, yeah. oh, okay. Um, um, Dave, I have a correction wanna, for the minutes, or? Gotcha. So, so yes, Michael, I'll, do you want to withdraw? Pull, the, I'll pull. Yeah, I'll withdraw my motion. I'm sorry about that. I, okay, I was not fine. at that meeting. It says I was present. Ah. I wasn't there. Okay. Okay. Yep, that is correct. I have a comment as well. I believe yeah, at the ahead, bottom yeah. on page, the last page, it says five, zero, zero. I believe there was one nay. 
and it's just the count wasn't correct. Uh, if you're saying bottom of page three, 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 I think that's just for approval of the minutes though, right? The approval. Oh, that was for the minutes. Okay. My bad. My bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause there was a dissent on the actual application, but I think that is represented correctly as a four one. Yep. That, pass. Okay. Yes. 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 And then just the spelling of my last name, it's incorrect in the minutes. Ah, that would be a good correction. Sorry about that. No, how, that's I'm okay. Sorry, Dan, how do you, is it spelled? Oh, it's I, a B I E L A W I E C? Correct. Okay. I will correct okay. that. Thank you. Okay. So we have, uh, does that leave us with two corrections? So clarifying Rita's attendance and then correcting spelling on Dan's last name. Any other items anybody wants to? Review. All right, with that, can we have a motion on the minutes? Yeah, so I'll, uh, I'll move to, uh, to approve uh, the minutes from last meeting with the corrections noted. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Do All I have right. to abstain because I wasn't there? Yeah, I think so, technically. Yeah. Yeah, but we have, uh, yeah, but we have four of us who were there. So, technically, we had four eyes and no opposed with Rita abstaining. All right. Do we have anybody outside of the commissioners on the line? Uh, anybody who, or even commissioner, anyone wish to raise any items or business not otherwise on the agenda? No, Mr. Chairman. I don't think there's anyone else that wants to say anything. Okay. Anything from the commissioners? Is there any way right. we can uh, change some, uh, get it so we can stop seeing these applications of these AC units? <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. unless you really have somebody blatantly coming in saying like i don't want my neighbor to have the condenser unit yeah i don't know my Something. house yeah but I'm sure that yeah it's not, it's not a bad harder. question i know that is something and that um are you saying that there are oppositions to these um to these ac units being on the side of the, the house that's what you're saying well I think i'm so. saying that the 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 overall structure itself is is kind of negligent with you know the rules that and the regulations that are being put forth uh, it's it's minimal i guess is what i'm saying uh, i mean, but i could understand in some cases like you know where even this one where um like you were talking the you know that there might have been opposition from their their neighbor where they're, they're pretty close um but it seems few and far between from, yes, from all and, the ones that I've seen. But. And um, we have not seen, I can't recall any such opposition from any neighbors for any of these variances during my time. I, I can't recall that. Not as long as I've been on either. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I, I do recall the previous um, chair had raised this a couple of times during my time on the board because we, yeah, we get a fair amount of these and um yeah i guess thankfully they're fairly straightforward and um so you know i don't know if eventually there is opportunity charles at some level to consider a more blanket um approval maybe where we didn't need to hear each of these but um yeah it is what um, it is yes in in the past um this department has tried uh and even before my time has tried to eliminate the need for a variance for these um, units. But the, the thing is, uh, accessory units are only allowed in the, in the rear yard. So we mm. can't classify them as accessory units. So we have to include them as a part of the principal structure. So that's why this um, side yard uh. 
setbox come into play because it's really a part of the principal structure being in the side yard. Which and is crazy. Have, and they have to meet these side yard requirements. So hence, hence we have a, a, you know, a need for a variance to install. I mean, it. even yeah. when it's not sharing the same, like it's not part of the same foundation or, I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, so <laughs> accessory structures are allowed to be five feet from the property line. And if this was deemed an accessory structure in the side yard, five yard setback would be adequate. But that's not the case. So, you know. You see where, okay. you see yeah. where I'm getting at, Mr. Chairman? If it was deemed an accessory structure with the five feet setback from the property line, that would be even more closer to the to the neighbors. Right. Okay. So so bottom line, it seems like we will continue to uh, to have these come up fairly regularly. I mean, I do. Yes. Yes. I do have a question, kind of on the IAC. Um, I don't know, David, if you were on when we approve the condenser unit on the Silestein Highway for a residence and it was in the front of the house and we added stipulations as far as screening Yeah, goes. there were some, yep, I so, do remember um, that. So I don't, I don't know, Charles, in regards to that, um, what kind of follow-up is done um, like in regards to seeing if they follow through with the stipulations, you know, we passed a yes, variance I, with stipulations. I must say that this department should follow up on um, stipulations that are issued by, by um, by the board, but I don't know if that particular one that you mentioned. I, I'm un, uh, unaware of that one. I don't know if that one was followed up on. But um, it's an it's a interesting point and a very valid point too. Yeah. Yeah. Just curious. Yeah, that, that, I think yeah, that I, one's like I, across from Cove Deli, and I don't think I think I was over at Cove Deli. Like I will say that I will make every effort to follow up on these. Um, approved variances um, with not only the conditions but to see if they're in the right position as granted by the variances. However, there's a slight um, discrepancy with that. The, the thing is that um, I'm not necessarily in a position to to establish property lines, so to speak, so, so to know if it's too close, if it's in the right place, because on the plot plan, the plot plan will show you a measurement of like, let's say 10 feet. Right. But for me to go there and identify that on the ground, not being a survey, it's, it's not so realistic. Yeah. No, I understand. Yeah. Yeah, you would pick up on anything egregious. I mean, right. yeah, know, like they that, put it. Yeah, the case I bring up is I think we asked for them to put bushes in front of the AC. So that like, you know, would not require you know, Charles to be a certified land surveyor to measure it out. But for the, for the screening, yes, absolutely. Okay. For the screening, it should be followed up to make sure that they are adhering to that um, condition. Okay. Yeah, I was just wondering. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other new business or other business items before we move on to the next point on the agenda? All right. Well, the next up then is formalization of officers. So Charles, can you give us um, just any context or background we okay. need to have around okay. this process? So, um, so Dave has been acting in the capacity as a chairman for some time now. And um, it was mentioned at, at one of our meetings that we should really try and formalize uh, this position so that we can um, have Dave in the position of uh, chairman rather than continuously being vice chairman. And um, maybe we should also, I mean, maybe you should also elect, uh, seek to elect a vice chairman and a clerk if, if you see it possible, if you see it necessary, I should say. All right, so, so you're saying the uh, the clerk position is up to us. I know it's just it's been a position for all uh, my time. I can remember we've had the right. three. Well, if it has been that way, I would recommend you you appoint a, a clerk 
episode. Okay. And is there, Charles, a, um, is, I, I will confess, I don't know that we've done this uh, consistently. Is there a nomination process or anything that we need to follow from a procedure standpoint with this? My information is that you could do it um, on your own, between yourselves, like select okay. a, a chairman and, and a vice, vice chairman from your group by yourself. Okay. So we could nominate Dave tonight to be chairperson, and and enough of us are here. We could vote. Um, you have five members. Um, I I don't know if you would want to wait until you have like um, one way to look at it is to wait until you have the full uh, number of. Uh, the entire board of appeals members, and then you could do it at that point. Okay. That's something to think about. Or if you want to do it tonight, that's another option. Um, yeah. So either I'm way, actually, I uh, don't see a problem. Either way, I don't see a problem. I think, I think Liz is available. It looks like she sent an email that she wasn't able to get in. Right. I don't know if you saw that. So, um, all right. Well, I think I, um, oh, go ahead. Did I cut somebody off? Maybe it would be prudent to have, uh, to just delay this process until we have the full host. So that way each person would get to put their nomination in for, uh, to nominate the chairman and the vice chairman and so on. That's, that's my, um, yeah. And if we do that, if we delay it, um Charles if, if do you want to be involved like if anyone else is interested in if it, wh whoever is interested in, in any of the positions should they reach out to you in that interim period just so we have a good sense or should we all just discuss it when we get back together the next time I think you should do that when you get back together the next time okay so I'm going to, um, well, actually, yeah, I, I'm going to make a motion that we table the formalization of officers until our May meeting, assuming we have uh, full representation at that one. I don't know. I mean, it's up to the board to, to, to you know, what, what, what do the other uh, members think? Yeah, I think we should table it till we have more of us here. Yeah. So the motion's on the floor. Did somebody second it already? I'll second. Yeah, okay. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we will table formalization of officers until <laughs> the next meeting. Uh, Charles, anything we missed? Uh, so far, so good. Um, this is our second virtual meeting. I don't know how many more of these we will have, but um, so far uh, this has been uh, going pretty good in my opinion. And um, yeah, I, we're making the best of it. Yes. Um, yeah, we're trying our best and I don't see anything else. I can't think of anything else that we would want to discuss at this time. All right. Well, with that, thanks okay. everybody for joining and uh, we shall adjourn for this month. Okay. All right. Stay well. All right. Thank you. Yeah, Bye. you too. Bye-bye. 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 All right. End of recording.